Well, well, a high court in London has upheld a decision to grant bail to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Conditions of his release include a bail of more than $300,000 in cash, the wearing of an electronic tab, and, and obeying a curfew. He has been detained in London since his arrest last week on an international warrant to face sex crimes allegations in Sweden. Meanwhile, in Washington, The New York Times reports federal prosecutors are looking for evidence of any collusion between Assange and Army intelligence analyst Bradley Manning, who is suspected of leaking the massive trove of classified government documents. Justice Department officials are reportedly trying to find out whether Assange encouraged or even helped Manning to extract classified military and State Department files from a government computer system. If he did, they believe they could charge Assange as a co-conspirator in the leak. The Times reports the Justice Department is under intense pressure to make an example of Assange as a deterrent to further mass leaking of documents. While all eyes are on Julian Assange, little is being said about the plight of Bradley Manning. He's the 22-year-old U.S. Army private who was arrested in May and has been in detention ever since. For the past five months, he's been held at the U.S. Marine Brig in Quantico, Virginia. Before that, he was held for two months in a military jail in Kuwait. In a new report, Glenn Greenwald, the political and legal blogger at Salon.com, writes that Manning's being held under conditions that constitute cruel and inhumane treatment and even torture. Glenn Greenwald is joining us now via Democracy Now! video stream from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Glenn. We are getting um, the latest news um, from London. Uh, the reports are that Julian Assange will be released. Bail was upheld. One of the details that are being hashed out, the ankle tag—he uh, has to wear an ankle bracelet—may not work well in the large mansion where he will be staying. He's staying at Ellingham Hall, a 600-acre, 10-bedroom mansion owned by Captain Vaughn Smith, a former Grenadier Guards officer who runs the Frontline Club, a journalist haunt in London. So, uh, that's the latest news out of London. Uh, go from the latest on Julian Assange, where uh, all, have, all spotlight is focused on him, to someone who is not so well-known, remains behind bars, Bradley Manning, Glenn Greenwald. Right. And, of course, Bradley Manning is the 22-year-old Army private who is alleged, though not at all proven or convicted to have been the source for not only the diplomatic cables that were just released, but also the trove of documents about the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, as well as the video that showed an Apache helicopter attacking unarmed civilians and killing two journalists in Baghdad, as well as other undisclosed, yet undisclosed information that WikiLeaks appears to possess. Um, as you said, he's been held for seven months uh, without being uh, 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 convicted of any crime. Um, and the conditions that I recently discovered he's being held in are really quite disturbing. Um, and this has been true for the entire seven-month duration of his detention. He is in solitary confinement, um, and he's not only in solitary confinement, which means that he's in a cell alone, but he's there for 23 out of 24 hours every day. He's released for one hour a day only. So 23 out of the 24 hours a day, he sits alone. Um, he is barred from even doing things like exercising inside of his cell. He's constantly supervised and monitored. And if he does that, um, he's told immediately to stop. There are very strict rules about what he's even allowed to do inside the cell. Uh, beyond that, he's being denied just the most basic uh, attributes of civilized imprisonment, such as a pillow and sheets, and has been denied that without explanation for the entire duration um, of his visit as well. And there is a lot of literature and a lot of psychological studies and even studies done by the U.S. military that show that prolonged solitary confinement, which is something that the United States does almost more than any other country in the Western world, um, of the type to which Manning is subjected, can have very long-term psychological damage, including driving people to insanity and the like. Um, it clearly is cruel and unusual. Um, it's arguably uh, a form of torture. And given that Manning has never been convicted of anything, unlike the convicts at Supermaxes to whom this treatment is normally applied, it's particularly egregious. Well, uh, Glenn, in, in January, we interviewed Atul Gawande, a practicing surgeon in Boston and a staff writer at The New Yorker magazine. We asked him to talk uh, in, uh, about the effects of solitary confinement on prisoners. The science of what happens to people deprived of social contact is they 
have to fight for their sanity, and many lose their sanity. Um, that reality that we are social beings in our physiology um, led me to ask the question, is solitary confinement the way we're practicing it now, torture? And you can't read the cases, and I describe the cases of both hostages and people who are in prisons, and conclude that, number one, those experiences are different. They're the same. Number two, um, you can't conclude that it's not torture. What we have observed, and we've learned this from both hostages and from prisoners, is that um, you, first of all, you begin to lose the speed of thinking. Um, you slow down to the point of needing to sleep for hours a day and yet being tired. And then it advances to a point where you can dissociate, you begin losing touch with reality. Um, uh, one prisoner I spoke to, for example, after uh, three months, you're allowed to get a television, which he looked forward to as a chance for maybe a kind of social connection in the world. But by that point, he, he found the television was talking to him, uh, through asking him to kill people, um, and he had to stow it underneath his bunk just to be able to um, uh, survive and live through this. Well, uh, Glenn uh, Greenwald, you, you've written about how other governments around the world deal with these kinds of, or react to these kinds of uh, detention conditions. Could you talk about that? Sure. I mean, there are different levels of solitary confinement. I mean, there's the full-on sensory deprivation that they do at Florence. And as I indicated in my piece, what's being done to Bradley Manning is not quite to that level. Um, he does get a certain amount of TV time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, a day, um, where they stick a TV uh, in front of his cell, for example. They claim that he's able to try and communicate with the detainees through the walls on either side of him, which is obviously not real social interaction. But he is alone in his cell 23 out of 24 hours a day. And there are European courts, um, including the European Court of Human Rights, um, which enforces treaties to which EU states are bound, including the Convention Against Torture and just the general human rights treaties, um, that bar the extradition of any citizens to any country where they're likely to be subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment. And there are currently war on terror detainees, whom the United States considers highly important um, detainees who are contesting their extradition in these European courts on the ground that if they are extradited to the United States, they will be subjected to the kinds of inhumane and cruel treatment which EU courts ban, primarily solitary confinement. And there are case laws, cases um, in EU jurisprudence where they have refused to extradite uh, prisoners to some countries, such as Bulgaria, on the grounds that solitary confinement is a form of torture, and therefore countries are bound not to transfer their citizens there without at least a guarantee that they won't be subjected to those sorts of um, tactics. Other countries around the world, in response to pressure from Amnesty and others, such as Tunisia, have re all recently renounced the practice of solitary confinement for any more than a few days at a time, except in the most extreme cases of extremely violent prisoners. Um, so what the United States is doing is really a departure from Western norms in terms of how people are imprisoned, especially pre-trial uh, detention, where the person has been found guilty of nothing. Glenn Greenwell, we're going to come back to you after break. He's a constitutional law attorney and political and legal blogger at Salon.com. He's talking about Bradley Manning, who's been charged with uh, the release of the documents, actually getting the documents that ultimately released by WikiLeaks. And the latest news out of London, it appears that Julian Assange will be released. His bail was upheld. And we'll give you more on that in a minute. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.